for staying with us. Town meeting. We have the morning mouths of Seattle here. This, my pal here gave me this orange glove to wear. Doesn't it look cute? This could be my fashion statement for 1997. It's cool. Go ahead. Be. I'll, I don't really want to put you on the spot here, Bob, but I think that, honest God, the trademark of Twisted Radio are the Twisted Tunes. I was wondering if you could indulge the audience with one of those for us. Why? Let me get this right. Is he asking you to sing? Yes, but uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I only sing backup vocals on them, but uh, but Spike sings a good number of them. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, think, I think what's called for is a duet. Well. You know what? I'll tell you what. Why don't we hold on to this, and maybe during one of the breaks we'll talk all nine people into singing for us. We'll find a song that they all know. Oh. You know what? <laughs> it, it may be just 99 bottles of beer and I would like to show you though. I think the Seattle audience deserves a twisted tune. Well, 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 I'd like to show you something if I well, could. No, buy our Christmas album. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Never stop selling. Oh, all right, Bob today. wants to show us something. Here's I your glove back. I something that I think is actually more important. Go ahead. How many of you saw the news stories about the visions in Yakima recently, the road signs. Sure. Okay. Just a few days later, someone <laughs> came into our studio, a rock musician from a band called Fried Stew. Fried Stew. You want to plug him? Go ahead. Fried Stew. <laughs> <laughs> Buy their album this Christmas. It's his candy corn. Yeah. He brought us in a candy corn, and I know that this is going to seem silly, but it's in the shape of the Virgin Mary holding <laughs> oh, the baby no. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Where are we Morning going show, here, guys? it's a gag, <laughs> right? But I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of these things. Doing these shows, you're always reading about these things, right? Sure. You've been so, have the fajita with the face of Jesus on it. Right, you guys right, all have that yeah. one. Right? <laughs> okay. There's there's one every couple of weeks. This is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Now I have the actual corn, but first I'll show you a picture because you can all probably see. Oh this. man, <laughs> <laughs> it's spooky. Oh man, I can. No, here, I, pass it around. Yeah. <laughs> Do me a favor, write to them. <laughs> Don't write to us, please. Uh, I'd like to say that I, I really enjoy Kent and Alan and Renee in the morning, uh, but my question is for uh, Kent. Uh, you guys are real cards on the show and, and do a really good job, but most rec uh, recently you had a, a suspension. Uh, could you tell us about that? <laughs> Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, what happened? Oh, good question. Boy, it's those impromptu ones that really get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I work here at Channel 4, too, during Northwest Afternoon, and I thought it might be funny to have a little fun with the news department. <laughs> so on April Fool's Day, it's always the hardest part in April Fool's Day to figure out what to do. I said on the air, we started in the morning. Actually, Alan said at 6 o'clock to our listeners, whatever we say, agree with us one half hour from now. Yeah, we started an April Fool's joke and said, okay, in a half hour, we're going to start telling a story. We're not going to tell you what it is, but you just play along. And we said that uh, Todd Johnson, the weather guy, punched Dan Lewis. And, and they a got big fight. <laughs> <laughs> what happened is they right. got calls here, and we're owned by the same company. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Damn I gotta tell you, this is a true story. I'm up at the QFC, and somebody <laughs> comes up to me in the grocery aisle and says, hey, what's going on with Todd Johnson? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said, yeah, call that bad, those guys. People, <laughs> took, people took it seriously. Yeah, I'm, real seriously. Dan took it seriously for a while. Yeah. The people that work here took it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, April Fool's Day next year. Ken Strand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a question for Dana. <laughs> Kiss 106 is great, but how does it feel being the newcomer and a woman in charge of your own program, saying what to do in the morning? How do you think it feels? <laughs> <laughs> Ask the Kiss Boy. How do you feel, Kiss Boy, when I tell you what to do? Uh, <laughs> he just obeys. <laughs> he, just, he just obeys. Is this an industry in which we're going to see more women emerging, coming Absolutely. forward? Absolutely. Sammy? Yeah. 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 Good point. Dana, was it tough for you to break in for a spot like that? And I'll ask Sammy the same question. I mean... No, because they were looking for a single female to host the show. So... I, mean, and I, I was very surprised as well. I thought, you know, I thought that um, I started late in, in radio and I thought, well, I, you know, I'll be somebody's sidekick. And I never really envisioned that there would be a day when it would be, you know, 50-50 and it happened so quickly. And, and I, think that it's a, I think that's a great statement 
to where radio is going as far as women are concerned. Because it, it wasn't all that many years ago where you didn't hear female voices no, in, in the same true. Young type country of, started uh, out, <clears throat> out that way, excuse me, where we wanted to, to differentiate from everybody else. I mean, we've had the traditional male host, and then it became teams, and uh, we even have an echo on our... A lot of people complain about the echo. What's with the echo on your radio station? But that's just I the don't one even know. She doesn't even notice it. But uh, it's usually when she sticks her head up to my, <laughs> my ear. Which I do often. But a lot. <laughs> but, and uh, pray tell, why would she do that? Uh, do so she can hear the echo. You can hear the ocean in there. It's We're ocean close. shores. Yes. <laughs> well, look, I'm staying at the Polynesian. Well, and another thing, too, uh, Scott used to be a woman. I did. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks, well. <laughs> My former husband. <laughs> Speaking of women, we're going to talk to Alan about his wedding dress episode. Yeah. We'll see. Ah, yeah, we'll get to that. I've got a question for Ken Alan. I'm a regular listener. They know me well, pretty good. And you guys always talk about this experience that both you had somehow when you were in college. <laughs> Could you please indulge and tell the audience what this interaction was and out of the closet? Just explain what you do. That's really... <laughs> no, it's just... People, we have worked together for so long. We've been together for 15 years. We say that, and people think we've been together for 15 no, but years. But they do that because you bring it up. Well, there's just <laughs> once in college. Did Alan come out of the closet or Alan come out of the closet? Huh? Did no, he... Alan came Alan, out of the closet. Alan, Alan, okay. Yeah. Oh, Alan. <laughs> now, to, to kind of fuel this conversation a little bit, how many years ago was it that you guys sent a wedding picture into the Seattle Times? Well, how many years ago was it? You were in high school. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was about, Great. what, ten years ago? Ten years ago, maybe. Yeah. Seven, ten years ago. We pulled a stunt on the Times. And give me the, the Reader's Digest version of it. Uh, we posed as a bride and groom. The makeup artist said I had more feminine features than he did. <laughs> so I got a wedding dress and got made up. We submitted it to the Times wedding section. They printed it, and then we went on the air and said, hey, find our picture in the paper. It's worth a hundred bucks. And they, they didn't think it was funny either. <laughs> <laughs> and they check. They check. They do a background check, but I, he was an aerobics instructor, and I worked for Boeing. Like, you're going to be able to follow that up. <laughs> uh, uh, Who's gotten in trouble with stuff that they've pulled? You got in trouble for that. You got in trouble for the, uh, yeah. Dan, uh, trouble? I get calls from people I do Twisted Tunes of from time to time. Um, I had a Tom Petty song once called, I've Got a Long, Long Nose, to <laughs> Love is Long, Long Road. Tom Petty's attorney called me, and he was laughing on the phone as he was asking me not to use it, and I said, <laughs> sorry. And, that, and then I never heard anything again, because it's actually okay to do. Trouble? Uh, we did a parody spot of uh, a Marines commercial called the the Morons once, <laughs> and and it sounded so good that we decided to play it back to back with the, the, the real Marine spot. spot. <laughs> and they didn't think it was funny. No. You know, you could you could meet up with Marlis this weekend for Armed Forces, <laughs> and uh, you know, who knows? <laughs> Sammy hasn't been here long enough I to know. get in trouble. <laughs> I did something when I worked in Spokane that I didn't get in trouble for, but it started out just as a boredom with a friend of mine. We called up the mayor, and I just said I was Steve Stewart from the high school and wanted him to come talk to our high school class. And then we eventually called other people and got them to show up, and then we called the media and, and did press releases. And it got on all three stations that night. So <laughs> I think the statute of limitations has run out by now. <laughs> oh, but I didn't, get, oh, I didn't get in trouble for it because I didn't admit it then. 